clean park quality productions at home that rival big budget events at local theme parks. We're excited to get a sneak peek at what some of SoCal's hottest hunters have in store for Halloween 2021. Please welcome to the stage co-founder and creative director of Midsummer Stream, Rick West. Excavation. So they are doing mine tours to fund the excavation, to 
to find these prior artifacts. And this one they're trying to find is Calico Jack's Wealth of Stolen Gold. So you're going in this mine tour. Uh, you're going to go 400 feet down in a new elevator, one of our new scenes. And you're going to get a tour of the mine shaft, active mine. And you're going to maybe even see a live chest opening. And that's where it just all goes to hell. So. <laughs> As well it should. <laughs> all right, that's great. You know, we'll take a little look at it here. Let's see. There's that's from last year, and uh, they did a little change up last year. I'll let Christian explain that, and then uh, let us know what we can expect this year from you guys, Christian. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, been doing it for quite a while now here. Uh, I haven't been doing it 50 years exactly, but it's been a part, just similar to Jacob, been a part of my life uh, growing up. Really started out not scary farm. Me and my brother just loving that. And always wanted to go and turn into doing it at our house and whatnot. And yeah, uh, last year due to COVID and everything, really wanted to still do something for the Hunt community, um, especially with all of those major theme park attractions, unfortunately shutting down. So really love to get back to you guys. Um, and really are the reason we keep going strong every year and wanted to continue getting bigger and better and just do some new things that we haven't personally been able to do yet. Um, so yeah, last year, that is a uh, much scaled down version um, of what we kind of normally do as a usual full, full length walkthrough. So last year just really did kind of a more so a visual display um, and really again excited to get back into the full regular swing of things with the full walkthrough. One of the things we absolutely love about our hunt team is we usually get around 30 to 45 volunteers each night. Um, whether it's actors, um, people helping fog machines, effects, and things like that. So we really have a big crew that's a huge part of our family that truly loves this, this haunt lifestyle as well. And we do it for a good cause too, we partner with the uh, Family Promise, um, which is a nonprofit out in Santa Cruz. So all our donations go to them each year. Um, and yeah, just amazing, exciting stuff to get back to it. And I'm excited to have you guys out this year. Yeah, that's really awesome. You guys, you guys shoot for a lot of guests every year. Like, like, what's your average? Then keep in mind, this is in a neighborhood, and anybody that's tried to do anything in the neighborhood knows that it just takes one sour post to really, really throw a wrench into the entire work. How many people do you guys have that come to be one of our property here? I honestly can't give you the true answer. No, you need to lie. You need a really big ass out. Um, Quite a few, quite a few. But one of the things, and we were all talking about it before coming out here, that we really like to do with our con is try to get everyone through as quick as we can. Um, there's nothing any of us hate more than waiting in line for something for an hour, hour and a half. Um, to then go through it could be absolutely amazing, but we really try to push people through as quick as we can, but at the same time, it's just your individual group going through the maze versus some of the theme parks that you need to have that throughput of a conga line going through. It's just yourself and whoever you're with going through and really just makes it more immersive. But we uh, we never really kept a count of how many guests going through each night, but it's, it's definitely up there. It's a lot. <laughs> uh, so seriously, as you're planning your con hops this year, you've got to make at least two nights available for the Santa Clarita area because that that whole region up there has just blown up in the past several years with home haunts. And it's literally, it's impossible to see everything in one night. You just, you, you can't do it. So it's definitely a two-nighter. So if you're planning this year, definitely, definitely plan to go see our brethren up north in uh, Santa Clarita. All right. Next we have Mr. Fowler. Shadow. 
Adams. Brennan Thomas Dean. Home haunts can just 
just get a little bit more, you know, a little bit more time with you. Just try and just don't feed your neighbors to burn your shit down. Yeah. So, you know, but uh, yeah, so we are really excited. This is prison. You all went to prison, right? Starting off at the ship, we'll be in front of the yard. 
but you will be going into the ship wanting to, to access the display I mean, the names and the names inside. And it's going to be great. It really is. That, um, again, I just got to thank all you guys for our support and uh, thank you again, Greg, for being so supportive of everything. And it's going to have so much cool stuff. I can't explain to you just the ideas, uh, but it's just going to be really, really big. Awesome. Thank you. These all sound really, yeah, what city is it in? Oh, sorry, it's in Norwalk. Norwalk, yeah. Right in the middle. Right there. So, you know, it's obviously shaping up to be a great, great Halloween season. And I do need to say, I would be remiss if I didn't say, for every haunter that is up here representing, there are 10 other fantastic home haunters out there at least in Southern California. Southern California. Boy, if you guys haven't heard me, you're cut off. You're that's it with you. You're, you're done. So the hell down here. So you know, if, if, if you've heard me over here talk about it, I'm not like kidding. The hype is real. There is no place on earth, literally, like Southern California during the Halloween season. We have an embarrassment of riches of, of different haunts here that range from, of course, our big theme park haunts to these home haunts that, in many cases, rival what we see at the theme parks. And uh, it, it's just amazing. No, not even Northern California. I mean, nobody has it to the extent that we have here. So if you haven't really like, kind of pondered it, ponder that we're really, really, really lucky to live here in Southern California with these guys and gals, of course, that do the haunt stuff. And um, so for this year, I have a general question for the group here. Um, one of the stories that I'm hearing, that, that you know, COVID being the gift that keeps on giving, is that a lot of home haunters now, they're so pumped, and then they go to Home Depot or whatever, and suddenly the building materials are like through the roof because there's a supply shortage or whatever. You know, fryers, you know, you know, whatever it is. You go to get your piece of wood that's normally in six bucks, and it's like 60 bucks or whatever. How has that impacted you guys this year? Go see what precedent that I have in their backyard. <laughs> For me, it's been all about reusing what I can from prior years and then waiting because I mean, wholesale prices on a lot of these goods have dropped already because you have to hit the retail stores. So it's about waiting for those price drops to actually hit the home depots of the world so that we can take advantage of them. But you know, the longer you wait, the more you're rushing at the end. So it's kind of like a trade off there. Kind of like what David said, we're using a lot of what we had from last year. Um, what we do kind of to um, fix that problem is we go to Home Depot a lot and we go to the back of the store. And a lot of you may know they have discount wood piles with the perks spray paint on the river. So we always go back, we go to once a week to check out the wood piles. And we like ask them, like, oh, what do you know about the wood? Like, oh, we don't know, it's just whenever. But we go back there and just grab any wood we can from us, how we get our supplies for the lawn. So it really benefits us. Yeah, uh, you go to the paint section and they have the pre mix where they got the colors wrong, but sometimes they just write for a color. We do that too, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, similar to all these guys, I think we're reusing and just repurposing stuff too. And really, some of we sit down months ahead of time and think, cool, we want to change this room up or make this new thing awesome. That means we're going to have to get rid of something else. It's not go out and buy an additional. 15 wall panels that we would build and whatnot. So really thinking strategically with what we do have available to us and even at the same time too, free stuff as well. Be one of those things I know all of us have probably been in the moment of driving around town somewhere and hey, pull up. Pull the car out of the restaurant and what is that? Ooh, let's go pick that up real quick and throw it in the back and take it off because we can use it somehow. Yeah, I think one thing too, it's like, you know, there's the hard cost of construction and whatnot, but last year was really weird when it came to like actors and stuff too, right? A lot of us scale back and change the formats. So, you know, there's the, the, the cost of labor or the cost of the materials, and then there's like the, the labor of having people come out and actually work your cons and participate and help out. And I think like, I can speak for everybody up on the stage here. If any of you are, have ever been interested in helping out the haunted house, if you would scare acting, I think all of us have uh, probably room for you in our cons. So you should probably reach out to us after this time. And they won't take your ADD. Yeah. That's good. How we can Um, I have one thing to say. Offer up is my best friend. That's oh. awesome. <laughs> really, really, really made the ship what it was last year. I think if I would have that option, like just the yeah, apps. 
stop to just do it that way and focus a lot better and I can just get done with things done a lot quicker. But you know, with the price of the and all that, maybe, maybe I'll try a little bit, you know, a little more saving. Next will be the spruce goose. <laughs> yeah, that right. <laughs> the thing with weight. Yeah, I mean, um, you know, for me, uh, I, I take kind of a different approach. Like, I try to plan as early as possible. Like, we're talking in June timeframe to like get things started, especially if there's going to be like pre-recorded stuff, we have to film, edit, all that kind of stuff. Um, and you know, like, every year, it's you you want to perform better than the, than the prior year. Like, you want to give people something that they haven't seen before. And there's like not only an internal pressure, not only is it like pressure that I put on myself, but like seeing all the amazing stuff that these guys do and what the professional haunts do, it just makes me go like, yeah, I can do that. Like, I'm going to do something like that. That's awesome. It's inspirational, you know? So it's like a combination of like this challenge and stress and a combination of like inspiration to try to do cool new stuff that just like drives you to put together a better, better haunt every year. And also like you, you, you come to a certain point where like you just simply can't do all of the work yourself. You know, and so like you have to start bringing other people on the team to come help out. So like you bring in an AV guy who can help you with stuff. You bring in a guy who can do your filming and stuff. And slowly but surely, like you're making all these awesome friends. You're like upping the experience at the haunts, and the next thing you know, you have something that like people are really, really happy to come to over here. So um, I mean, there's a lot of pressure putting on you know, on and like, trying to top what we did last year, obviously. But for us, at least. If we're at least putting that joy in people's faces and they feel like that was amazing, and like they really were excited when they come out of the next, that's what we really go for. It's just as long as those people want to do that, like we inspire those people, that's our goal. Yeah, I think similar to that, 90% of what we're all doing, and I think half the time in the back of our minds, we're like, dang, I could have done this a little bit better. Or, this doesn't look the way we had initially designed it, but then seeing everyone come through, having a good time, smiling, and having some great things to say just makes it all worth it in the end. You think we're our own most critics, you know? Being, like you said, there's so much around here, you know, you're not comparing yourself maybe to the next hole. When you're going to the scary cars, looking, you're just like, I can do this. You know? <laughs> and you're comparing your whole life and you're to that, you know, for people that, you know, it's like this positive feedback loop to it, right? Because like every time you build something really cool, like you feel pride in it, and every time you see people enjoy it, you feel pride in it, and that just makes you want to build more cool and cooler stuff so that people enjoy it more and more. So it's like this self-feeding cycle. Like people enjoy it, well I want them to enjoy it more. So we've got to do more. Are there any other questions? Just shout them out if you're out there. I got like a dot light in my eye, so <laughs> shout out. Yeah, well, yes. Yeah. 